everybody, welcome to another episode of XGR in the morning. Okay then, so as you can hear, we have Chris, aka The Mole, joining us. Hello, hello, hello. And we have the stay at head. Stay at home. Stay at head. Stay ahead, bad gamer. No, see, I'm not making it. using the Contra code or the Konami code to get ahead. It's also a little offensive, Rick, that because you're bald, she's looking at you and being like, "Yeah, look at me. She's just staying at head because it's so no. bald. Look at it, honey, bro." At home, yeah. It's so vicious and offensive. Okay, no. do it over again. Let's see. I don't stop laughing. And also joining us is the oh my god, I was gonna say it again. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're saying it now. Girl, I can't say it. <sighs> I, I, I will do you a favor. I will step in and say, the stay at home dad gamer, Rick the Hammer. Yes, the stay at home dad gamer. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I honestly thought he'd say hello after my cool last introduction. I he totally <laughs> snubbed you. Let's get ready to head. <laughs> okay, are you still there? Are you just trying to cut ahead of me? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Anyway, like every section, we're going to yeah, start off. That's what we just ahead. Like every section, we're going to start off with the news. You still haven't had Rick to say hello. <laughs> say hello, no. goddammit. <laughs> I did, I said so. <laughs> there you go, that's your hello. Yeah, yeah. I did, I said so. <laughs> Deal with it. Get off my lawn. <laughs> what the freak, old man now? Yes, he is. <laughs> all right, all right. So, we're going to start off with the news now. Enough jokes aside. Okay. I shall go f- I shall go first this week. Because I, I always find it easier to l- let the host go last with the news, because that way they can seamlessly transition from the last one to the next category. See, I, I plan ahead with that. That's but why yeah. you're the smart one, which is the head. <laughs> I'm the smart and pretty one. Look, just the head one. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> XGR News. Sony Online Entertainment has actually said that they're going to port. This news is for James Phoenix. I know he'll enjoy this. DC Universe Online to the PlayStation 4, so and your accounts are meant to carry over. So all your characters and stuff, and all the stuff you've worked on, will carry over to the PlayStation 4. Also, that with that news, they also said they're also going to bring Planet Side 2, the first-person shooter, and then that, currently available for PC, to the PS4 as well. Yeah. I'd say, too bad he doesn't listen to this. Uh, it is. But your thoughts, your opinions... Not much to ask. They, yeah. I'm just Not saying they ask. still better do that with, I don't know, they better do that with Dragon Age carrying over shit. Because I did not play those games a million times to not get my perfect stories and endings to be for nothing. You should play that again soon. Shut up. Okay, my next bit of news. This news is mainly just for me and any Sonic fans out there listening. Despite what Nintendo of Germany's press release said the other week with with the free planned Sonic game, Sega has officially confirmed with IGN's Rich George, I believe his name is, that the third Sonic game will not be coming out this year. Does this mean the third game is not going to be a spin-off or a kart racing game like we thought? Could it actually possibly be another proper main Sonic game, like we're getting Sonic Lost World, because could this be a sequel to Lost World? Sonic Battle Adventure 3, please, Sonic Battle Adventure 3! <laughs> you mean Sonic, Sonic Adventure 3? I say Battle Adventure, because the battle part was technically over the adventure. It was, But the battle was only in, in number 2. But yes, I totally agree, Sonic Adventure 3 needs to happen. We want Sonic Adventure 3. We're getting but, Sky Riders 2, or whatever it was. Yeah. But there's been so many adventure fans. Honestly, I hope Adventure 3 is not part of the exclusive deal. I would like the adventure one to be the one after that that would also be on PS3, 360, or even next-gen consoles and stuff so that there's more people available to enjoy and experience that because I'm a huge fan of the adventure series. 
I'm guessing Richter has... What do, you, what do you think about that, Richter? Do you have any thoughts or opinions you'd like to see? Um, not necessarily. I mean, you're the <laughs> Sonic fan. I, I liked Adventure 1. That was the Dreamcast one, right? Yep. Yeah, that one was awesome. That's like the only one I played for more than a few minutes, and I really liked that one. Ah, cool. Okay, my third and final bit of news is about the Xbox 360. And don't worry, Richter, it's not a bad news. Isn't it always bad news? Nope. This one's, <laughs> oh. this one's one I would actually enjoy myself if I still had a 360. Microsoft has confirmed with Lionhead Studios they are releasing Fable, the mm. anniversary edition. It's a HD remake of the original Fable for Xbox 360. This will include the lost chapters, added achievements, smart glass integration, yay, leaderboards, new UI, and full 1080p HD visual update. I would say yay, but I um, only played Fable 3, and it was terrible, so if Fable 1 is um, nothing like that, then I'll say yay. It, yes. it, it isn't, yeah. Okay, the okay. Fable games get progressively worse. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. I was, I, ironically, I was speaking to Marcus Shadow the other day. Hi, Marcus, if you're listening, which you're not. But uh, <laughs> I, was speaking but... To him, I, I was speaking to him the other day, and he said the same thing Rick that just said that. Fable 1 was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed Fable 1. I loved Fable 1. Fable 2, I've heard... Even though I've not played this, so I don't. I'm not going to say it is 100. percent But from what everyone else says, Fable 2, a little bit uh, much worse than the first game. But when the third one came around, and it's even worse. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, if you want to play a better version of Fable 1, I recommend uh, Kingdoms of Amalur: Reckoning. That's what Fable 1 should have been. Fun and fact. if you're, oh, you're going to mention the PlayStation Plus. Yes, I didn't know if I was yeah. there. It's free for PlayStation. It's, it's for Europe. Yeah, yeah I'm. That, that's awesome for Europe. I mean, I already have it on 360, so I'm not like mad. I think it's that's an awesome game, and it's. I'm mad. If it came over I, here, mm. I'd probably replay it. <laughs> yes, uh, to, to be fair, even if it wasn't just over, if it was just over there, I wouldn't be mad either. I never. I'm, I'm not. I never get mad over the region exclusives because sometimes you guys get much better games than us. Sometimes we get better games than you. It ends up balancing out. Yeah, and a lot of times there's crossover. And I mean, if you know someone in that territory, you can get a PlayStation Plus card, so you could have two PS Plus accounts if you really wanted to. The magic of PlayStation. That sounds expensive. Yeah. It's more. It'd be cheaper to go through uh, mole than to <laughs> buy it on the internet, though. Actually, if Richter wanted to go through me, if he had a European account, I do have a couple of vouchers here for European PlayStation Plus one month free subscriptions. Yeah, there you go. Which I can't use. I can't use because I've already been PlayStation mm. Plus. Therefore, I can't use them. Right. I'm like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming I still got them, I'm throwing them out in the night. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, that was my news. That's cool. Well, let's move on to the head. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. I said a head because I was com That's combining, cool. like, head and, like, dad and, you're like, just, you know. You were looking at my, uh, my site's logo. You were um, combining <laughs> home and dad. You were just saying the word head. You were yeah. you, 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 what you meant to say is you were combining home and, and dad. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> I, I, or she was, I'm insane. She was watching some Al Snow matches. <laughs> um, I uh, think I was looking with at her cat, huh? and it confused me. <laughs> well, maybe. She's that actually really so... Dirty. I've got a new theory. And you, you can hear it here first, folks. Geeky Girl is so sexually attracted to Richter, she wants to keep saying head as if she's trying to entice him. Uh, I think we can eliminate that one right there. No offense. Uh, I'm pretty sure well, you're, right, you're the stay-at-home dad gamer, not the stay-at-home single dad gamer. Like... <laughs> yes. Ding! He just got a trophy. Adultery. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm aiming for the five in a row one. Um... <laughs> For uh, for my first bit of news, going with the HD uh, theme, I guess, just piggybacking off that, uh, Namco Bandai announced a Tales of Symphonia 1 and 2, basically HD collection coming out for uh, PS3, which is awesome. 
because previously they were a uh, GameCube and a Wii game. The first one was on GameCube, and I think there was a PS2 port, but not in this country. And the second one, which I've heard is worse, I haven't gotten around to playing it yet, was a Wii exclusive. Three sixty. Or no, sorry. Um, yeah, that's area. Area. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. But uh, those are awesome games. Definitely looking forward to that. But and it's then not next... on the Wii U. That's okay. I don't. No, have it's Wii not Wii. okay. <laughs> It's not okay, because they're not going to have, like, there's been rumors that they're not going to have any Tales games on the Wii U, and that makes me so sad face. That's not true. It's possible the third Sonic game could be a spin-off featuring Tales the Fox. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Tales of Tales. That's also her, sedu- her seductive voice. <laughs> <laughs> if you get seduced on that, you may want to check yourself in. <laughs> It's like before this. It's like before we started to record today, Richter. I I tried to convince her the human centipede was an erotic horror. <laughs> wow. Yeah, if if you really like two girls, one cup, I bet it is. <laughs> I was like, you sick fuck. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, the next God. bit of news is um, Zynga, makers of popular Farmville and other Facebook games you currently hate. Uh, closed <laughs> OMG Pop, which made the Draw Something game that was briefly popular, I think, last year. Which they uh, they bought the studio for two hundred million dollars, and now just closed it. So yeah, good good business practice, Zynga. Way to overspend on that. Um, and so yeah, all those people pretty much are out of jobs, and apparently they sound somewhat happy to <laughs> not be working for Zynga anymore, which I can't blame them. I can imagine and, that. Yeah, really. I wouldn't want to either. But uh, last bit of news is they announced the Saints Row 4 Collector's Edition, which comes with a statue of Johnny Gat, a big red button, and uh, probably the best thing, they have a replica with sounds and lights of the dubstep gun from the game. So you can run around your house and pretend to kill people with dubstep. Nice. <laughs> Now, is the red button, like, is it, like, the easy button that you get from, like, um, Staples? Kind of. I think it's because you play as the president. I think it's supposed to be, like, the the theoretical big red button that will launch the nuke. I think it has, like, a little glass, like, hinged case over it. Ah, that's awesome. I don't know if it does anything. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. I don't know if it actually, like, makes a noise or anything. I would totally put, like, a sticker, press this button in your house while, like, self-destruct or something. (laughs) And just just put it in, like, somebody's house and see what happens. I have to say, wouldn't it be hilarious if that's a USB peripheral you stick in the game, and for, like, once every, like, couple of years or whatever, like, once a year in the game, if you press that, you can nuke the entire city. (laughs) That'd be awesome. (laughs) I think that would result in game over. (laughs) Oh, it would then turn it into a zombie apocalypse. (laughs) Similar to the same show of the third, which had all the zombies, it would turn into a zombie nuclear apocalypse. (laughs) It's hidden DLC. When you <laughs> once they release it, you hook that button up to it, and you can initiate zombie mode. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now it's my turn. I have yep. two little bits of news for you. A little, the both about the Wii U. First off, any unboxed, uh, or still boxed, um, Wii Wii U, the originals. The eight gig ones. The basic. You the basic, the white ones. They're all getting um shipped back. Because apparently, like, they get a big old recall. Nintendo officially said that if you really want the white ones, they'll still technically be available. Although they said they wanted to thin them out or something. Personally, I think this is for two reasons. One, because no one really wants it. If, you're getting, like, if you really want the Wii U, you get the black one. And um, the second one is that, like, the black one's more money. So, like, that's more for them, too. I, I also think it's for a third reason. And? Yeah, me too. <laughs> in, in Japan... They mentioned yep. no one was buying the white Wii U because of the small hard drive. So in Japan, they've released the white one, and it's after all, they're going to release the white one, and they've yeah, had expressed gonna. interest with the 32 gigabyte hard drive and stuff in there. So you still have the option of making it white like the Wii, which is kind of cool, or you got the black one. And either way, whichever color you want, white or black, it's not a case of black is bigger. Oh God, that sounds so horrible. <laughs> it just—it's going to be our next shirt. <laughs> <laughs> <Black is> bigger. 
Mm. But yeah, it, it sounds like what they're doing with that is just they realised, okay, the white one's not selling, everyone wants the bigger hard drive. Yeah. But people will still like the look at the white one, let's just put the bigger hard drive in it, which is cool. Yeah, that'd be cool That's to do That's what that. I'm hoping they're doing. Of course, I already have the black. Actually, I already have two Wii U's in my house, so I don't need another one. <laughs> wow. The second one? <laughs> well, see, the first one was for me, and the second one was another one my mom was going to sell, but she never got around to selling it, so she Skypes me on it now when I'm at college um, via my Wii U. I was like, you should, uh, you should ship that ahead to me. <laughs> well, I was going to say what you, I was going to say. What you should do with that is melt it and sell it for a few thousand. No, I hate you. There you go. <laughs> but like, um, also, what allows her to do is uh, she can't. She used to use the Wii to watch Netflix, but she since got the new HD TV, she can't use the Wii to watch um, Netflix on the TV in the living room anymore. So that's what she uses uh, the Wii U for mostly. I also have to point out just to any listeners here that may not have a Wii U. I hate him to point this out. It's not actually Skype. It has a video chat function built in there. You can check that out on my Wii U review over on the Gaming Zone. It's similar. But it's very similar to video chat with Skype, and it looks perfect. The only reason I'm saying that is the one one of the few features of Xbox One which is actually good is it's the only console with Skype. Which <laughs> I, I kind of don't want to take that away from it, if that makes sense. But I can't believe I'm, I'm actually being nice to the Didn't Xbox you say one. the um the camera, though, on the... The, the camera for the Wii U on their chat or video program actually looked better than the one on Skype? I said it looked better than my computer's webcam. Okay. Now, it's, it's, <laughs> it's flawed, it, it, which it does, which is ironic. It also looks better than some of the camcorders I've had. However, based on you know, the Kinect camera hooked up to Kinect being like 1080p or whatever, or uh, however fucking HD it's going to be, it's going to look like, it's going to look badass. I mean, I'm going, to call, I'm going to call spade a spade here. Both the PS4 camera and the Xbox camera, they're going to look awesome because they're HD, big, powerful motherfucking cameras. Yeah. Plus, it's easier on my mom with the touch screen so she doesn't have to, like, press a bunch of buttons to figure a control out how to turn it on and do everything, and it's easier so on her. What you're saying is both geeky girl and geeky woman, which is your mother, <laughs> both, both of you prefer to be surrounded by the big black ones. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. And your mother just loves reaching out and touching the big black one. She loves touching it, getting a little pad, stroking it, you know, scrolling around, you know. And sometimes she'll, sometimes she'll appear on video and make you watch her play with the big black one. Absolutely. I'll record that. Save it for later. Saturday nights, you the know. girls want up. <laughs> anyway, second bit of news I have is that on Amazon they have an adapter for a GameCube controller that works with the Wii U. Uh, I, uh, my initial thinking was if if they ever have um, retro GameCube um, games on the Wii U, you could use it for that. But Mo also pointed out that it's more likely going to be used for if you have Wii games that used the GameCube, you can probably use it for that, like Super Smash Bros. Brawl. But this also makes me, like, think, what about, like, on the Wii, on the Wii retro side, like, if I was playing, like, this original Paper Mario, that was with, what, like, Nintendo 64 controller? But you didn't need a Nintendo 64 controller, you could just use the GameCube one, so could the GameCube controller also work with that? that that's one of the things I mentioned to you, I'm hoping it's for that, because a lot of virtual console games on Wii needed either the Pro Pad or the GameCube Pad, and I'm sorry out the two, I like the Pro Pad more for playing the SNES games or the Mega Drive games and stuff, but I, I prefer the GameCube Pad while playing N64 ones, because stuff like, I mean, I'm sorry, stuff like GoldenEye, if, if they had that, or Pokemon Snap or whatever, I prefer playing them using the sticks and stuff like that a lot better on that one. Because the GameCube pad's closer to the N64 one, if you know what I mean. But, yeah, there's a few games on Wii which used the GameCube pad, which I, I was like, because on the Wii U, you just can't use them. And I kind of wish they I kind of wish they brought out a patch, which I understand they can't, but basically let you use the Pro pad instead of the GameCube pad on Wii games. That'd be awesome as fuck. Well, see, that's the thing. I noticed, because when I transferred from, like, my all my Wii stuff to my Wii U, like, I bought a lot of games on the game, uh, on the game store. Like, 
like, like I said, the on Paper Mario and stuff and all the Zeldas and everything else, and I couldn't play them because I could not use my Pro Controller and stuff, and I was, like, sitting in my dorm room, I'm like, no, it's right there, it's so close, yet so far it's mocking me. <laughs> And, like, I really wanted to play it. And then, my of course, Renan, you don't know him, but, you know, Renan, he was like, oh, I can't wait to play Super Smash Bros. It's Friday night, and I've been waiting because I don't have, like, game systems at home. Fail. You can't play. Ha ha. Like, it's I, like, ugh. I do believe your friend Renan, last time I spoke to him, and he mentioned, like, Smash Bros. Brawl. Isn't he the guy that started to weep for the travesty of Princess Peach grabbing Toad and using him as a human shield, being like, oh my god, this guy's so loyal to her, and she's just abusing that, she's a tyrant, and then he went on a big tirade comparing her to, like, Saddam Hussein or Hitler. I think he'd be the opposite, because he's so pro-women, he's kind of against men, so... Is <laughs> so Toad I, really a man? <laughs> I think it's a genderless thing that somehow has varied intelligence. Although, as, as we pointed out, as we, I mean, we may have said this in, a, in an old XGR, if not, I know I've mentioned it to Richter in the past, I really have a problem with Toad, <laughs> based on Mario and Sonic and some of the other games, and Mario Party and stuff, where Toad screw, kept screwing me on one of the Mario Party games, which then, my hatred for him on every game with him, I go out my way to kill him, which I'll admit, a few times on Brawl, I would play this Peach just so I could be like, oh, you're about to use your ultimate attack. Toad Shield! <laughs> you told me about that when you were playing your, was it the sports game, and you kept attacking yeah. Crispy, who was Toad, or he had Toad you as know, his friend? I, I, was on, I was on the team with Crispy, but Crispy kept saying to me it was going out my way because I was using my special, and every time I did, I would, I would aim the little circle on the floor straight for where Toad is, just <laughs> blow him up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's my Even news. So, and sometimes I cost us points. <laughs> uh, so that's my news. I'm probably going to get it because I have a lot of um, still old games, you know, 64 games I like to use the game controller with. GameCube controller. Nice. I've been wanting to get a pro pad for the Wii. Cause I used to have one, but I don't have one at the moment. And some of the old games do use the pro pad. And I've been like, eh, they're cheap enough. I may get one. The old style classic pro controller, not the new pro one, which I do love the new one. But yes. Now we're going to talk about the games that we played this week. And we're going to start with say, 20 guys. We'll also say I haven't seen a host this bad since the WWE celebrity <laughs> guest host. <laughs> so nah. And only, only Rick to know, out of the three of us, only Rick to knows how bad they were. Oh, man, yeah. <sighs> I, I kind of miss some of them, like Bob Barker. But yeah. <laughs> it, Support the space program. <laughs> yeah. It, it's catch-up week, which means I, I should go first. The third, I've played this week, Sonic Colors. Badass game. Fucking love that game. I've been mean, getting ready for July on Gaming Zone is... Sonic month, and I've been playing Sonic Colors a bit more and capturing some stuff with that, ready for when I go to review it. Awesome game, love Sonic Colors, highly recommend that to any Sonic fans. Next up, I've been playing Defiance, which it, it's a cool MMO, I've been enjoying that. I've been going a bit more through the story, been enjoying just shooting stuff up with my acid guns, pretty cool. Check out my letter play on my channel, that's pretty cool. Next up, I've been playing the Mega Drive Ultimate Collection, or, as it's known in America, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. <laughs> an, an epic collection of over 40 gaming classics, as it says on the thing, as you can hear that, read in the box. Featuring Sonic the Hedgehog, Streets of Rage, Echo the Dolphin, Shining Force, Golden Axe, and many more. This game is basically, if you're like me, a kid who grew up with, like, the SNES and Mega Drive and stuff, if you, especially if you had the Mega Drive, you need this game. It's got everything that you fucking love. Gold Max 1, 2, 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3, Streets of Rage, Sonic 3D, yeah. Sonic, <laughs> Echo the Dolphin 1 and 2. It's even got Vectro Man with them. And Sonic Spinball, Columns and shit. It's fucking awesome with the sheer amount of stuff that's on this. Now, I will give it one big complaint I have with this. I know some sites like Retro Gamer gave it 98%, but I'm sorry, the Sonic fan in me has one major fucking problem with this game. 
it has Sonic and Knuckles, and it's taken away the one feature of Sonic and Knuckles, which was badass. You can't click it into Sonic. You can't, like, use the lock-on feature of the game to play as Knuckles in Sonic 2 or Knuckles in Sonic 3. Which I'm like, eh, because I, I'm sorry, I loved playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles and going through Sonic 1 and Sonic and Knuckles all as one big game, which is the first ever Sonic game which features 14, count it, 14 fucking emeralds to collect, because you have the 7 Chaos Emeralds in Sonic 3, and if they're locked on together, you also have the 7 Hyper Chaos Emeralds, so you can play as Hyper Sonic and stuff, it, it's awesome. I never heard of the Hyper Chemo, um, Chaos it, Emeralds. It's because they were only ever used in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. After that, there was no point to them, because every game you might as well just get the Chaos Emeralds, because they're pretty much the same thing. <laughs> okay. It's so. just an excuse so you can go through and collect them again. <laughs> That's cool, with though. That, uh, with that Ultimate Genesis or Mega Drive collection, uh, one thing I want to say, as much as I enjoyed it, fuck Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I fucking <laughs> hate that game. I fucking hate, like hate that movie. game. I don't it's like literally that. in the first one, or in, in that collection, that's the only trophy I don't have. Like, fucking hate that game. <laughs> I'm gonna, Every other game was fine, but... Oh! I'm gonna throw out something here. Okay. Sonic Month, July. If I capture the footage and shit like that, ready for when we go to do it. Since it's a Sonic-themed game, I know it's a bad one. Victor, would you like to join me to review Mean Bean Machine? Wow. I would, except it's been so long since I played it, and I don't want to replay it. <laughs> I can try, though, if you want. Yay! Yes! Because <laughs> that's the one thing I hadn't put up there. For. That's one of the few games I hadn't put on there, like Sonic Spinball and shit like that. But I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> but the final one, it launched this week. Yesterday, in fact, because we recorded this on a Wednesday. Marvel Heroes, the MMO. I'm so excited. You played the beta, it's the same thing. <laughs> but it, basically you get to pick the you get to pick a character at the start out of five existing characters. I picked Thing because well, I like punching things. But <laughs> I picked Thing I'm going through and at the end you get another character and I picked up the uh, Hawk I picked up Hawkeye and stuff. It's a fun MMO. I'm looking forward to the fact in the future I will be planning to do a multiplayer like Mayhem. Of that, featuring me, Marcus Shadow, if Geeky Girl's got the game, then her, Richter, if he's got the game, and we'll just sit down, we'll record ourselves on Skype while playing this game, it'll be epic. Sounds like fun. I do have one mm, complaint with this, <laughs> and one thing I loved. First of all, the thing I loved was the intro movie. It's so fucking good. And the motion comics look crisp and stuff compared to the beta. Obviously, because the beta even had the time stamps on it, you know. Like, those were those were hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks so. It, they look better in that, but the opening animation is a proper like. It looks like the new animated Marvel films, and I'm like, I love this movie. I would buy an entire game or an entire film just of this story. But the thing I hate, and this may just be the comic fan in me that really hates this, but you're playing the tutorial. As you're playing this tutorial, it talks about, okay, an escaped from prison is level, and it mentions, like, how high up these threats are, including Green Goblin, and you're like, okay, yeah, Green Goblin, he's a pretty damn impressive-ass bad guy. I mean, he, he killed Gwen Stacy. He is to Spider-Man what Lex Luthor is to Superman or Joker is to Batman. He, he's awesome. I cannot wait to see him in this game. Wait, he's the tutorial bad guy, and Shocker is chapter one or two? <laughs> Level one. Negative one. Yeah. Negative yeah. One. <laughs> yeah. You, you, what the fuck? Which means you, you, you have to be a higher level to defeat Shocker, the guy that constantly gets made fun of for being, like, the human pillow, than you do Green Goblin? <laughs> the fuck? None of that makes sense to me, but yeah, those were the games I was playing this week. Rictor? Alright, uh, first up game I was uh, playing this week was Mugen Souls on the PS3, because they finally released it on the, the digital version. I'm so glad and we have uh, you. You can keep playing games I've never heard of, and you educate me on that's, games. I will that's my job. <laughs> it's a surprise, Rictor, but I'll say after he's talked about the game. Mm -hmm. I bought that game. Nice. The disc version. 
I, oh, wow. And I was so disappointed with it, I traded in within a day. I believe that. <laughs> I'll explain why out in a sec. Yeah. Well, um, it's, a, it's an RPG, and uh, has a ridiculous, like, the plot is just crazy, and I like it, and the characters are all very strange, kind of reminiscent of uh, Disgaea, where everyone is just ridiculous. And uh, it definitely has a lot of the deeper things of Disgaea, like with uh, making peons and fusing them and crazy stats and fucking ridiculous damage and the billions and all that other crazy stuff. I'm enjoying it so far, although it's very, very kind of creepy. It makes you feel like a creep playing it because, like, you don't want to play it around kids because there's a lot of weird things in there. Kinky. And, like, when you... Yeah, well, whenever you make it, yes, yes. There, well, there is <laughs> the main character. The main character has basically eight personalities, one of which is sadist, that are like different types of women, basically. Because um, you're supposed to make enemies like fall in love with you. I don't know. It's all very zany. But when you make a character, they're just in their underwear. Like you have to actually go buy clothes for them and put clothes on them. And so when I first made a character, I was like, all right, I'm going to make a mage. So I have a fourth character. And then I had no clothes. And I'm like, I'm not putting a naked person in battle. This looks awkward. So I just put them in my sub party. And I was like, it was kind of weird. But I mean, like the, the main characters you get are actually clothed. They have like an outfit. But it's just like, at least give them basic clothes. And I just, I'm not running around with an underwear party. Like, that's just weird. Do <laughs> we sexy parties? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the thing I didn't like with that game uh -huh. was the fact it was an RPG. Mm -hmm. Please tell me you know what I did with that. I was in the store, and I saw that oh. game on a box, and I did not read the box or anything. I hadn't really heard of it, and this is a mistake, and I wanted, I'd done this myself. I looked at the box, I saw the title, I was thinking Mujan. The big Street Fighter game on PC that has like fucking yeah. Batman, Superman, Power Rangers and shit, and I'm like, oh my god, that's on PS3. Okay, and we may not have as many licensed people. Maybe they've done the little big planet route and they've gone the license route of DLC. I'm gonna buy this. I sit down. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I can't wait to play this. I plug it in. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I you're... start to just weep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, when you said you bought it, I was surprised. I was like, you don't play RPGs. And then, okay. Actually, I do so play delicious. RPGs. <laughs> I do play a lot of RPGs. But the ones I... Yeah, I, Dragon. yeah, yeah Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, so Western RPGs. Yeah. I did used to play Eastern ones. Like, I loved Final Fantasy 1 to 6. Mm. 7 was way too fucking easy. And then after that, it's been a case of, oh, look how feminine and emo I am. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, if I want to see a feminine emo person, I'm sorry, I'll just go check out Simon's channel. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, Simon. <laughs> and that's another viewer we lost. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back. He always does. So those were all your games? Well, I, that was the, well, I played another one. But, okay. Um, uh, so after that, uh, finally yesterday, yeah, yesterday, well, sorry, Tuesday, since we put this up Friday. Uh, on Tuesday, they released the Project Cross Zone demo on the 3DS eShop. So I was totally pumped that they finally put that up. Uh, tried that out. Really liked the game, although the demo is really short. It's basically one battle. and uh, But it's, you know, like a strategy RPG, so it's still, like, about 30 minutes to do that battle if you want. But the demo has five uses, which is freaking stupid. Like, I, I hate that when they, like, the 3DS ones it's like oh look 30 uses of this demo like i probably won't even use that but just the idea that there's 30 pisses me off <laughs> but other than that it was uh what do you mean uses really cool. like i'm thinking yeah, uses. Like you can only boot it up like so many times yep oh we, uses i was thinking like uses like you can use it as a hat you can use it as oh. this you can use it as like <laughs> that's what i was thinking i was like what do you mean 30 uses it has one use <laughs> a game to play like see I'll, I'll admit there is something extremely good with this with uh -huh. the with the use thing which, like, the Wii U one does that. There's something extremely good that they just don't take advantage of. Uh -huh. It's only got a limited amount of uses, which means pe the people who make the game know for a fact you can't play just the demo and never have to play the full game, like uh -huh. I've seen some people do with games, which means, technically, the Wii U should get more demos than the PS3 or 360 because of this use thing, but they don't capitalize on that and it gets less, and I'm like, fuck you. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, like some games, like fighting games, some of them don't get full demos because they realize, okay, the full demo, 
it's like let's say it's the wrestling. Okay, you've got a full match type with the wrestling game, and it's I don't know, John Cena versus fucking Ryback. Let's say just because those two are feuding at the moment. Those two are the two demo characters, and then guess what? Okay, you may like John Cena, you may like Ryback, which means you never have to buy the full game <laughs> because you can constantly play the match, which I've seen some people do. If it was limited to just five or ten or third, I, I think five is a little too little. At yeah. least fifteen to thirty uses is good. But yeah, sorry for that. I just I, I would hate that uh, though if it was one of the demos that my kid likes because that would drive me crazy. Because there was one like that. Um, Oh, was it Pixel Junk Shooter, I think, had a limited number of uses. So after it ran out, I was like, I'm not buying this. So I just deleted it. So. Yeah, I, I had <laughs> With one, kids, I, that sucks. I had one like that with kids, where when I had the 3DS, one of the, the games I downloaded on that, because basically the kids weren't sure if they'd enjoy a 3DS, because they were like, oh, you don't like 3D. And I was like, you can turn it off. <laughs> you can turn it off. Yeah, man, wouldn't it just be a DS? I'm not supposed to know you know this. <laughs> but I turned off the 3D because I know it gives kids headaches. Uh, I passed up the, 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 the 3DS on that and played this game of Nintendogs and... I think it was Nintendogs and Cats or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And it had limited use of, like, 20, 10 uses or something. And the kid really loved the demo. And they kept playing with their dog. And after 10 uses, I had to have the conversation of, yeah, I'm sorry, you're... I had to get rid of the demo. You, you you did? Why? Because it only had limited uses. Demos don't have limited uses. We still play on the PS4. And you deleted my game. <laughs> and, they, and I was like, what? I'm no joke. One of the kids even said to me the sentence, you deleted my game. This is not over. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and it's almost like, well, no, no. And, he, and all day he was looking at me as if to say I would murdered his dog and he wanted revenge. <laughs> oh my God. It was horrible. <laughs> I almost want to kind of see that in film. <laughs> I will say this is the same kid, but when I gave him a Power Ranger gun, the first thing he did with it was I was in the kitchen. He says to me, Uncle Chris, and I said, yeah, could you kneel down for a second? I said, yeah. He then whacks me on the back of the head and points the gun down the back of my head like he should pistol whip me in an execute me fucking, like, Afghanistan terrorist style. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> You're a good influence. And I, and I even said to him, I even said to him, what, what are you doing? And he said to me, I'm playing Power Rangers. This is what they do. No, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, well, they should. <laughs> and I couldn't argue with his logic. <laughs> You're such a good influence on those kids. I didn't influence him that way. That's the horrible thing. <laughs> Yeah. I'm always really protective of them. Like, if it's like, for example, I've been playing Dra when I played Dragon Age. If they walked in the room, I instantly paused it just so they couldn't see any blood or anything like that because I know the age rating, and I would refuse to unpause until they were in another room. <laughs> like when they went back to watching like the stuff with my brother and stuff. That's cool. All right. So now the games that I've played since you brought up Dragon Age, I'm. I have to take a break from it because I am addicted. I am horribly, horribly addicted to it. I've, like, literally, I spent, like, the last, like, a week and a half playing nothing but Dragon Age till, like, four in the morning, and I beat it, and then, like, I played the second one, and then immediately after, I played the first one again, and then I played the second one again. But you haven't seen all the origins Shut yet. up, I hate you. You need, you need the DLC of the prince for the second game, because it you changes everything. It changes everything. It makes a completely different game. You said he Have sucks. See. He does, but it changes the game, and it changes some of the dialogue, and it changes the ending a bit. Oh, my God. If you, Oh, my God, you've not played Dragon Age 2 yet until you've bought that DLC and played through it again. Uh, see, I hate you. And I don't I, if anything, I'd, like, only play Dragon Age 2 again so I could play Dragon Age 1 again, so I can play Dragon Age 2 again, and it's a cycle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, but, like, oh, my God, it's ridiculous. I, I blame this all on Alistair from being so hot and well written. I have, like, ugh, like, I just have a kind of crush on him. I He's no Morgan. Uh, maybe, but, like, I had an Uber crash on him, so I kind of, I had to Google, um, because I didn't want to play through it again, because I had to stop myself, I had to Google, like, um, dwarf Alistair sex scene. <laughs> See, I, 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 
my, my two crushes mm. is Morrigan and Isabella. So the point both times, or I'd say every time I've played one and, every, and both times I've played two, she's been the one I've romanced. You know what the weird <laughs> thing was? When I played Dragon Age 2 this time, where I told you I romanced um, emo whatever, emo elf, um, I didn't even get Isabella this time. I didn't even get her, like... Like, at all. She just didn't, like, appear. Because I kept waiting for her to appear, and I'm like, wait, I'm fighting I'm fighting these, like, horn-headed Kunaris. She was here last time. She's not here. Why is she not here? <laughs> I just didn't she get her. She should be. Is it possible you missed a mission that helped give you her? Maybe, but, like, I kept looking for her. I did all my missions because I literally completed it because I had to use every single mission to make um, Emo Head over here like me because apparently he only goes in tiny little inches, like plus like five, plus like five, and, you know, until he likes me. So, like, I did like every single mission, so I don't think that I missed one. I will say one thing I do like with Isabella in the second one, when you play through it with her as a romance, because the first time I slept with her and I romanced her, but then I ended up with the elf. <laughs> and then I ended up... When you say elf, I, you mean Juno? No, I mean the one that looks nothing like Juno or acts nothing like her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the, like, one that's into the blood mage and stuff. But yeah, yeah I went with Isabella, and basically, the uh, when, when whoever you romance, you get to say to them, look, why don't you move in here? And they move into your house. You don't get that option with her because she's so independent. And I like that because they stayed true to what the character was. It wasn't like you could just instantly manipulate them moving in. And the ending of the game, he's like, yeah, and the companions never see the champion again. And the woman's like, really? He goes, well, except for Isabella. I believe she's still going off with him on her ship and stuff. And I'm like, that's awesome. And then part of me thinks, wait, I don't move in. She doesn't move in with me. But yeah, I essentially become her, like, ship bitch and moving with her. <laughs> yeah, she's hot enough, I don't care. Yeah, but oh my god. To quote, to quote Spike from Buffy, I may be love's bitch, but at least I'm man enough to admit it. <laughs> uh, this also is terrible because now there's this guy in, um, I'm not going to tell the area I work, but I work in a real retail, and there's this new guy in there, and he seriously looks like, like a 22-year-old Alistair. He does. Uh -oh. So, oh my god. I've been talking to him and hitting up that, so, like, yeah. Um, where, every time he speaks, do you strangle him? And he goes, what, why are you strangling me? Where's your dialogue box so I have choices? <laughs> <laughs> no. Although he did make a hilarious joke about a cripple who needed paint, and it was funny. <laughs> anyway, so the second game I've been playing, I tried to play Lego City a bit because I forced myself to, like, play not Dragon Age. So I was playing Lego City a bit, like OCD, getting all my freaking. I have like so many super builds. I have like thirty super builds, and I have only like not even like halfway through the mission. That game's so good. <laughs> I know. I just have to get like all of them. Most of them are like the change stations for the or the, the what are they called the pickup stations. I don't remember the ones with the cars that you can um, stop and get new cars from. Little car station, but like that's it. I've just been obsessing over that. And then if, if okay. you get the Wii, if you get the Wii U, Richter, since you've got kids, you need to get Lego City undercover. That game's so good. It is. I probably will at some point. My sister who hates like everything I like in um, Lego games <laughs> liked it. <sighs> so I've been playing that, and then I started just skimming uh, pretty much Kingdom Hearts because I just wanted to get like so I don't derp around when I'm actually playing it, but. Kingdom Hearts because I'm going to be doing a let's play of that full so I'm just getting like familiar with it so I don't act retarded and not know anything and instantly like die a hundred times when I'm playing it so yeah I've been playing that and it's funny why we're reading it now I'm playing it now because I'm like oh my sister just like made fun of it and she's like oh look at those graphics and stuff because you can see like a few pixels it's not like completely seamless like you know like most stuff is but it's still fine it's still enjoyable and everything you know and the um the the not cutscene, yeah, the cutscenes, you know, are just as long, and the graphics are perfect on those and stuff, and it's really awesome. All right, no one wants to comment on that. Okay, I'm the only one who likes it. <laughs> I made. I a wanted, I wanted to like Kingdom Hearts, but there was too much fi new Final Fantasy stuff in there that I was like, eh. It's true. Although I, I eventually think... play it so I can kill Sephiroth again. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think, like, for me, anyway, although you can, like, totally debate this or tell me I'm wrong, and I'll be okay with that. Um, You're wrong. 
<laughs> I think that Kingdom Hearts to me was like the Zelda of PlayStation in its time period, except the years have been far less like nice to it. <laughs> Haven't been nearly as nice to it. <laughs> Because it was, like, when it came out, oh, that was awesome. That's, like, all I played for, like, the longest time. Like, you you know when the game's over? That's when your clock goes nine 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 nine, And that's, like, when you're done, like, because that's how much I played it and stuff. Although, like, I'm ashamed what it's become because freaking the story, it has, like, what, like four freaking prequels and in-between goals. And, like, it's, <laughs> it's gotten all convoluted and you have, like, three and a half slash blah 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 suck and then like you know speaking of convoluted and stupid worthless prequels I need to I need to continue with my God of A your God of War Ascension <laughs> <laughs> God of War Ascension at least is kind of fun like I played that and it's pretty awesome it also has no purpose it has no purpose <laughs> but if you ignore the fact that it has no purpose and just take it for like the game I don't even care that it's a prequel just the game by itself is good <laughs> oh I, I agree it's still fun but at the same time, the Kingdom Hearts games, from all the people that enjoy the series, they still enjoy the prequels, they just don't serve a purpose. No, the prequels do less than serve a purpose. They make the purpose of the games even more convoluted. Like, they just didn't belong at all. They would be better off not existing, I think. Chain of Memories. I understood, like, the plot points they're trying to get across, and it is important, like, as a chain from, like, Kingdom Hearts 1 to Kingdom Hearts 2, but that game was awful. It was awful. <laughs> so you're saying you're not going to pick up the HD 1.5 collection? I already have the Kingdom Hearts PlayStation 2 one because someone got it for me. I purposely wasn't going to buy it, and then someone got it for me for my birthday, and I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> now I have to play this. I'm like... <laughs> And so I have the Kingdom Hearts, both the, the, the DS and the PlayStation 2 one, and they're both equally terrible. M making it on the PlayStation doesn't help it at all. Not in the slightest. And I don't have, uh, I think I have most of the GameCube, or not GameCube, most of the um, the DS ones, like, except I think I had the, the whatever the hell amount of days slash other amount of days suck. <laughs> um, 358 over 2 or whatever yeah it was some stupid it was really terrible also um, I mean not as terrible as Chain of Memories but still kind of <laughs> and um, I do I have the manga for that though so I don't even need it for the story anymore uh, <laughs> say like I said that reminds me of the God of War prequels where I'm sorry it's really fucking stupid where the first game is a complete story of what happens when Kratos first gets his powers back and goes after Ares and stuff like the second game, or oh, sorry, not the second game, Ascension, is now, yeah, you know, when he was doing going after Ares, yeah, yeah, there was this big gap in between in which he killed a spider lady, a statue, <laughs> and you're like, well, oh yeah, there was also a guy in a prison that when he dies, goes to heaven and competes in Mortal Kombat for God, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's horrible. But Don't no. forget, he also had a brother who was also had coincidentally had that mark on him from birth, and that's who they meant to. That's who they tried to capture, but it, they were supposed to get Kratos instead. Yeah, we got about the PSP ones where you introduce yeah. his brother and stuff. It's like uh. that's what it does with like because I can understand the concept of the nobodies, but then you have like you have like Roxas, which I get, but then you have like the not Kyrie, like um, Zion chick, and then you have like Namine who comes from Kyrie, but she was never heartless, and then you have like all this other nonsense, and then you got like oh the worst one is in like I have the I have what is it the new one on 3ds I don't even know what it's called, but you basically. Yeah, yeah, that crap. So, um, which I have, and I've, I, I, I was thinking about selling it, but I couldn't bring myself to do it, because you know they what? have, um, what? So I was gonna say, you know what? what? With this conversation, and I know how long this one can be. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I wasn't complaining, because I, I okay. went on. on. You, 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 you continue on a sec. I was just gonna suggest possibly, and you can keep this in the um, final idea if you want to. But how about we add that to the list of possible topics of the future? Prequel games. Sounds good. Because there's been a lot of them, and a lot of them aren't that yep. good. And I know that also <laughs> technically goes into the prequel movies and TV shows. And uh, if we suggest it, if we suggested that to the authors, it would be for an around a pound topic. So suck it, bitch! It's on XGR. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, the only thing I was going to do is like the most recent game, Dream Drop. It has all these characters whose name are Melody, Harmony, Rest, B, like all these music stupid stuff. And if you look at these characters, they could not possibly have a rib cage inside them. They are literally these tiny little sticks that don't even resemble the human form anymore. 
Like, they just have heads, a little stick, and, and then, like, D. shoes. <laughs> and, like, oh, my God. And I hate all of them, and I would want them all to die. Mm, and it's... Uh, uh, although I do like the Pokemon monster collecting. That was fun. And I will <laughs> say one thing I have to ask Richter. Yo. Just based on, not that, but based on looking at the list of games and stuff I've played this week and the stuff I like and enjoy. Mm-hmm. It, do, am I weird in terms of gaming? For example, I know Rick that normally plays RPGs and stuff like that, and he he has like a specific genre that he enjoys the most. Like, yeah. Crispy enjoys shooters and stuff a lot. Whereas my lists... Before now, I've had stuff like Rabbids Land, Nintendo Land, Mario Party, Mario Kart, Sonic, Mario. But then suddenly I've got like Diablo style MMOs, old school RPGs like Golden Axe and shit, fucking Dragon Age, the RPGs. Like, I don't have a set genre. I mean, my favorite genre may be fighting games, but I, I, I don't play them too often, if that makes sense. Is that a little weird? There's nothing wrong with getting around, you know? No, I, I play lots of different types, and I enjoy I enjoy some shooting games and maybe an occasional racing game, and every once in a while a puzzle game. But yeah, so the reason I mentioned is this weird is because whenever I look on lists when people always talk about games they enjoy on the internet, it's normally you get a sense that okay these are all mature games or okay these are all strictly what quote hardcore games. You look at, like, the lists I enjoy, and it's like, okay, this is casual, okay, this is hardcore, okay, this is fucking an MMO, okay, this, this is for kids. This, this, is a, this is just a kid's game, or this is a family-friendly game, what the hell, and it's like, my list just, it's like, what the fuck? This is, a, this, is a game, this is an AO game, you know, with tentacles, and like, no. Well, I do enjoy tentacle AO games. <laughs> <laughs> as, as your sister will find out in the bedroom, Stacey. I'm okay with this. Wow. I just give it up, and I'm like, yep. Admi- admittedly, though, the comic geek in me, when I do the tentacle rape, may hurt the woman like I've done previously, because it's like, oh, God, oh, God, what, well, I'm just doing tentacle rape. I know, but it's made of metal, and it's got a claw at the end. Well, I'm Doc Ock, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> be Nipple pinchy. <laughs> Nipple pinchy <laughs> with the giant claw. Uh, all right. Well, now we're moving on to our discussion piece. <laughs> Bro games. And my okay. game's a little too Macho first center. <laughs> and when I think, like, bro games, I really think, like, you know, was that Gears of War where the people are all ridiculously yep. deals out? And, you know, it's like, Rawr! like, I can almost like, see, like, veins popping out of them and stuff, you know? And Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. And then they have the chick in the third one. I'm like... No, and they have this little tiny, she's like friggin' like my size, like five foot tall, and I'm like, what is she doing there? Does she know that she's there? Like, like against <laughs> all these like giant like brick wall people? Because she looks like she doesn't belong, and like she can't even friggin' hold the armor that she's wearing. She would just collapse under its weight. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense because they made her like thin and like, you know, like really like shapely, I guess, you know, like 90 pounds and stuff, but I can understand that like for guys because they're all ripped out and they can hold their like armor and stuff, but... You can't make, like, a 90-pound girl and then load her up with armor like that and then just maybe expect me to believe it. Yeah, maybe. she needs a metal bikini like all the other Yeah, I was going to say, maybe, I was say maybe she has a zero suit underneath. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. She has to get a Super Smash Brothers ball, um, brawl or um, one of those things. That's why she wasn't in the first two. It took her that long to get the, bu- the Smash Ball. <laughs> yeah. And wasn't your game, you had, like, a bro, like, game this week, right? Me? Yeah, wasn't that like you had like the game that was like um, I don't know what oh, you call it? That was the one I uh, talked about last week with a dra- with Double Dragon, which I'm sorry that's more of an old school game because it's for the fans of the original one where you're going down, you're beating people up, and like co-op is called bro up and stuff. <laughs> it's like and it, everything you do is like so fucking manly. Yeah. So and, like, it's, it's kind of really fucking adult too. With when the women come out on the screen, they pull out whips and shit, and they dress like dominatrix, like witching on your knees as she walks onto the screen. I'm like, yes, I love this character. And then you punch her in the face and throw her. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, like, it's like the intro to that game. You, could, it's so simple and simplistic. But I'm gonna use a staple for this. I'm gonna use New Super Mario Brothers as a staple. 
The first one are um, Wii and the second one Wii U. It's basically a simple cutscene of Mario's there, Bowser comes in, he sort of smacks Mario around, like, grabs Peach, kidnaps her and stuff, but it's not over the top. It, it's simple, it's Mario. This one is so double dragon of the cutscene is his girlfriend is stood for some reason in the middle of the night just outside his garage posing like a hooker. And these big muscular fucking guys built like wrestlers walk up to her and just go whack and like fucking gut punch her in the stomach in slow motion. <laughs> then grabs her, just tosses her like a rag doll over his, sh- over his, so- her his shoulder and just walks the fuck off. To which the guy then comes out and is like, oh, this again. Like, yeah, this again. Like, <laughs> well, have you ever have you ever played the original? Yeah, because that was the intro. Yeah, <laughs> but he walks over, punches her in the gut, and carries her. Yeah, but he doesn't say this again. Like he does this time. It's like yeah. Well, I'm so assuming like, he. I'm assuming that's a reference to the first, like that it happened in the first one. But it is an awesome uh, double meaning of that that happens every week. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I, I loved the first Double Dragon game. I loved like being able to turn on each other at the end and stuff. I, I love that game. That's why. I, that's why I bought Double Dragon Neon. It's so awesome. <laughs> And I got a let's play of that coming out soon with me and the crispy playing through that. Like we played for like the first, I think it's a couple of stages or so. Yeah, I was also Speaking thinking of like uh, talk about overly manly things. Duke Nukem, you know. <laughs> Duke Nukem's awesome. You shoot and die. Go <laughs> rip your head up, shit down your neck. I, I'm gonna say Duke Nukem is not overly macho ness. Really? As much as he's overly 90s. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I accept that. Because uh, let's face it, he was so 90s that as, as when I was playing it in the 90s, and yeah, I wasn't quite the age for it. <gasps> but still, I was playing it in the 90s, and I'm like, I love this guy. <laughs> and it so goes into the reference of the 90s where all guys in the 90s were like, yeah, check out my pecs. I'm the, yeah, I'm the hero. You shouldn't die, because I've got attitude. <laughs> it's night time, but I'm still wearing my sunglasses. I'm such a badass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's more of an American thing, because you guys tend to wear your sunglasses at night. There's, there's even a song about it. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> wear your sunglasses at night. I, I wrote there's, a song about it. There's even a meme where you guys take off your glasses and then say horrible puns. <laughs> or put them on after said pun. Yes, the way I've seen it both ways, which is horrible. <laughs> it only works if you can summon the theme music, though, afterwards. Yeah. Uh. But back to the macho nesting games. I'm going to say something a little... I don't know, I realize I may get some bad feedback. How does that ever stop us. you? I know, but I'm going to say the reason it's... Gay, a lot of games are over the top manliness, like Call of Duty. With, yeah, I'm an army soldier. Look at me take out all these men with my big gun and stuff like that. Even they're so manly and it's like big over the top action man characters is because I hate to say this, but I'm not saying all because I'd be offensive. But most, a lot of women, when you put a woman inside a video game store, and I've seen this myself multiple times. They will leave the store with Dance Dance Revolution or some really, like, uh, girlish, friendly-ish game. Whereas, and they're like, okay, but the ones that sell the most, the ones who own, like, the, like, I'm sorry, most women, now some, do, a lot of them do, but most women will not spend, like, £600 on, like, a PS3. Because I'll be like, £600 on a machine that just plays games? Hell no. And then they'll go and buy the Wii and play like, oh, yeah, look, I can dance with the remote and stuff, mm-hmm. which that's the reason I think it's because of the demographic that they're trying to capture. Yeah, I am definitely a minority in that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no doubt oh. about that. My parents, and you've actually, um, you pretty much described my mom, because she, like, has literally told me to go out and buy, and we have, like, four dancing games with the dancing pads and the singing remotes just for her. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, as soon as we got the guitar here, she's like, this exists, there's, like, things that exist. I'm like, yeah, there's even one for singing. And she's like, oh, God. yeah, and she's just, oh, my God, she's this. Yeah, that's what she does. My dad just laughs at her. <laughs> <laughs> Even my dad knows it's like, ah. Uh... 
Yeah. Wait, wait, like, like I said, not all of them do, because, like, like, for example, a geeky girl, assuming she's a woman, does <laughs> buy, it does have, like, PS3 and stuff like that. And I would not imply it was all. But at the same time, it is, there is certainly a more key demographic towards it. There is. Even my best friend gets, like, all these, like, 99 cent iPod apps, but buys them for, like, 3DS games. <laughs> and it, yeah. it hurts my soul. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and, and I know you don't watch this much, Geeky Girl, but it's like the wrestling, Richter. Mm-hmm. How manly has some of the wrestling been? Because there's not that many women enjoy the wrestling. They watch it because their boyfriends drag them to the event, <laughs> or they're clearly play, they're clearly paid for plants so the camera guy can zoom in and be like, look, there's a hot chick in the crowd. But if, yeah, either that or the small minority that just likes watching sweaty men hit each other. <laughs> yeah, or like the tomboy girls that enjoy like, yeah. okay, I'm enjoying yeah. this, which, which is cool. Like, they want to see like Batista, like the bad boys. And stuff. I'm all for sweaty men, but I don't like when they're just giant bulging like meat sacks of ugh. Like I like, I, don't know, I just like skinny guys and okay. stuff. So you, that's, like you know, if you don't like overly muscular guys and you like really sweaty Shut guys, up, I hate you. Don't even you go sh- there. I, no, stop you talking. Should, no, you, no, should, no. you should totally see me run for the bus. Uh, okay, as long as you didn't go where I think you were going, I'm okay with that. Where did you think I was going? I'm not going to mention it. Moving on. So, um... <laughs> yeah. But no, you said skinny, which rules me out. Yeah. Well, you know, as long as you're not, like, morbidly obese, you know, take care of yourself. Like, someone's going to die of me. Like, you're going to have a heart attack as soon as you bite that, like, you know, friggin' hamburger. <laughs> I, I, I would say I'm obese, but some people uh, disagree. Yeah, like, I've seen you. You're, like, I've, normal for American standards. Yeah, like, over here, I'm, <laughs> I'm obese, whereas in America, I'm skinny. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, another thing, like about in Japan, like, in Japan, I'm Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla! Oh my God, this tall guy! Oh my God, Godzilla! And he really let himself go. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about like extra broness and macho nessy games. When you play the Batman Arkham and stuff, like, and you get like the different skins. And my favorite one is like the Terry skin from Batman Beyond, which is like the skinnier one. And because for some reason they decide not to make him animated, and you can see his really, really nice butt that they gave him. Oh my god. But, like, there's, like, um, the other ones where they have, like, the many different Batman skins, and you can see, like, crazy, like, like, you know, muscles and stuff. And sometimes they give him, like, really padded, like, junk and, like, super, like, you know, giant, like, muscle <laughs> junk or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you can work so, out, like, that as a muscle to get it, like. Is, is he normal buff in those costumes, or is he Street Fighter Four super buff? Well, there's multiple ones. You have, like, normal oh. one, you have animated series, then you have, like, the old man, but and then usually buff, like, um, <laughs> old man, but then usually buff Batman. And Master Roshi? <laughs> I don't, I I don't know. But then you have, like, Adam West, and then... Max Power, come here, man. Yeah. <laughs> and if you ever, like, look at that, like, how the way he, like, fights and stuff, like, he kills a lot of people, like, they should be dead, like, the, the moves he's pulling on them and stuff. It's like, yeah, you just punched him straight in the jugular and he knocked him out. I'm pretty sure he's not breathing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that man kills people. <laughs> <laughs> he kills them. Well, see, he doesn't, me and my friend joke that he never kills anyone. He saves them and he puts them in a dangerous situation and leaves them there. He saves them for the immediate danger, leaves them there, and then goes away, and then they die because they're still in a dangerous situation. They've only been cured of that situation that took place five minutes ago. Like, they're going to hey, wake up and come back. Just because he's not going to kill them does not mean he has to save them. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but you kind of Batman begins the reference for the win. <laughs> you kind of defeats the purpose of saving them now when they're just going to die later. If you're going to let them die, you might as well just keep walking past them, like, you know, and go on to whatever you're doing. I can't believe I'm going to use this as a metaphor, but I refer you to Dr. House. Oh. Season 2, Episode 1. What's he that? saved the guy on death row, who was literally going to be executed the second he saved his life. Mm-hmm. He was going back to death row to be executed. 
But as House himself put it, he didn't save the guy because, oh, the guy so deserves his life or whatever. He didn't save him because, oh, yeah, I think the court should execute him or anything like that. He did it just because it was the right thing to do. It was within his power to save him. Therefore, he saved him because you can rely on people like House and Batman oh. to not necessarily do the moral thing, but to always do the right thing. I was, but I think the episode actually ended up with um, him, like, his, the disease actually may have exaggerated his anger and his emotional state, so it wasn't entirely 100% his fault. Actually, it did, but as House also pointed out when Foreman said that, House said, yeah, it does, and that rules out one killing. He still has three killings, like his <laughs> girlfriend, the, the other prisoner and stuff. Therefore, yeah, okay, it may be wrong that when I'm not going to tell the court about this one incident. It may be wrong to you. However, it's still right because the guy still took all those lives. He still deserves to pay for those lives. Maybe he's a and that's what you got to do. <laughs> which? <laughs> that's right, Liv. <laughs> which, yes, I've re recently been watching my house DVDs again. I got all eight seasons. I fucking love that show. Yeah, I have all the seasons, too. <laughs> but, Anything yeah. to say, Richter? You've been kind of quiet. I haven't seen House. But <laughs> oh. Well, anything in the family pro centric I couldn't uh, go there, but um, I don't know. Well, I made fun of Street Fighter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I uh, They have a place, I would think, bro centric games. Like, for, you know, games for bros, not necessarily super manly stuff. Uh, I'd say the dark side of making uh because yeah you mentioned with gears of war where they had the girl in the armor and stuff and yeah that looks odd but at the same time after seeing what they did with like chun li and street fighter 4 i'm okay with leaving them on the slimmer side because Ch chun li has man hands and her thighs are like as big around as any character's head and it just looks really awkward to me. <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like making a, a really buff like laura croft you know <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like these huge arms, yeah, just so kind of ruins like, that image from way back in the day. I hate to say this, but it's like Mortal Kombat females in recent years with the 3D games where, like, Sonya looked like pretty much a man dressed as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> but which, yeah, I agree. There is a place in society for these bro games, and that's because, like, colleges or, like, groups of guys hanging yeah. out together, you, uh, girls don't tend to do this as often. Girls... They were like, okay, we're going to have a party. Yeah, let's pop on the new fucking CD with the top latest songs. Let's dance. Let's boogie guys. Like, yeah, we're going to have a video game party. And you're going to play Street Fighter. You're going to play fucking the sports games. Come on, everyone, play football. Okay, everyone shoot stuff. And that's what these get times of games are for. Because it's like Nintendo brings families together. Aquavision brings college dorm guys together. Oh, you just described all my parties. <laughs> Which one? The first or the second? The, the um, second one. Because we used to play Perfect Dark, and I get all my friends together just to um, get everybody to play Perfect Dark all together on the N64, and we just go around killing all the Jackie Chan wannabes and stuff. Because there was a Jackie skin, um, the Jackie Chan skin, and I swear I'm not saying all Asians look alike, but this one particular really looked Hi, like Marcus. Jackie Chan. <laughs> Hi, Marcus. The X pounds Jackie Chan. <laughs> no, but this one really, really looked like it. I swear it looked like it. It wasn't me just being racist, thinking they all look like. Yeah, but I was going to say, uh, as I was saying, that was the direction the game industry had, I think, because more and more dorm people were buying these games, especially during most of this generation. However, now near the end, more people are buying these games, and either the college people have matured or the teenagers have grown up and stuff. To it again, like the wrestling, where we had doing the clam and they grew up, and we had the attitude era, and then the attitude era more, became even more mature straight afterwards. I know some people are going to be like, "What?" But I'm sorry, straight, the ruthless aggression era with like Brock Lesnar, John Cena, and stuff like that, where it was more realistic and it was less. Look, here's Austin coming to take out everyone because he's so manly. Which that that was more mature for me as an individual, and I think the game industry is heading more in this direction now because it's like it's like Bioshock. The first few Bioshocks, I played one or two. They seemed more. I know some people disagree. They seem more normal shooter-ish, the first few. And now we have Bioshock Infinite, which is, seems a lot more story-driven. The new Tomb Raider story-driven. Nowadays, with the game industry, it feels like now 
it's moving from bro-centric to story-driven stuff, which I kind of like. And right now, it seems there's, t- there's two types of games that have been released, well, three types of games that have been released at the moment. It's up to you two if you agree. There is the bro-centric ones, because they still have an audience, and there's always going to be college kids and stuff to buy these. Check. There is the games like the, like I said, the story-driven ones, like the new Tomb Raider, which is becoming more the norm. Like, even the Batman games, while being overly manly, they're still extremely story-driven. Which, you don't, which that's becoming more of the norm now. And the third option as well, because they realise, okay, there's still these gamers, and there's still gamers like me, Richter, Stacey, and stuff, that grew up on stuff like the NES, SNES, Master System, Mega Drive, and stuff. So, therefore... They're also doing what I would call retro-feeling video games, like New Super Mario Brothers is basically a throwback retro build for people who played Mario World. Sonic Generations was just one awesome fucking love note if you've ever played all the Sonic games. Love it so much. So much. But, but which means you're now, it's now, there's now like three main categories for games. Now, there is other ones, but the three main ones, like I said, is bro-centric, which is dying down, story-driven, and nostalgic-driven. I think some of why bro-centric is dying down to um, not necessarily maturing is I think that um, sometimes they, at least most industries do, especially video games right now, that they try to milk it. So, you know, you release a Call of Duty every year, and eventually you're going to tire people out. It happened with Guitar Hero, and I can see that happening with other ones. Oh, I can totally see that happening, and I, I agree, they have tired out a load of people, because, I mean, how many games came out in the last the last generation or two, which were just generic shooters? Like, who remembers Hades on PS3? The I game- do, because I have hella of those mints from when I went to mm-hmm. PAX. They, the guy, dude, crazy army looking dude was giving them out like crazy. <laughs> I remember that game when it was when they were advertising as well, Richter, with me and Crispy were talk about that game, and I was like, mm, it looks okay. And like Crispy was at the time, it was like, especially when it was first advertised, and he may hate me for saying this, but it was like, it looks sort of like the PlayStation 3 version of Halo. Nice. Okay, this is going to be like Halo, this is going to be badass. And then more and more towards the date, it was like, this is going to be horrible. And then it finally comes out, it's like, this is just a train wreck, and no one, not even Crispy bought that game, I don't think, because it's so bad. I, yeah, I don't, think, I don't know anyone that did. Yeah. I've uh, heard only of its existence. And I, this is also racist, which I don't agree with. I know that's shocking, because it's me, but I only, I only do racist comments if I'm targeting it towards, I just had to say someone of a different race. <laughs> Duh. But I was going to say someone of a different race that's a friend of mine because it's like I expect them to make English jokes at me or whatever. Because, you know, all the English people, you know, totally love Little Mermaid. We do. Or <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, Americans will make, like, butler jokes or cups of tea and stuff, which is fine. Mm-hmm. We, make bold, we make bold jokes at Richter because he's white, so it's, we need another reason to discriminate against them. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> However, the one I say is racist and the one that annoyed me is the bro-centric shooter games started... People, like I said, they, it was a heavy this and this gen. It started last gen. Wouldn't you agree, Rick? Um, yeah. I mean, that's when Halo and Killzone and yep. Black all and stuff... stuff. Yeah. All those yeah. started. But, but the game I point to to show how the industry goes to with this is a Sonic-related game. You know where I'm going with this, Rick, when I mention racism. Mm-hmm. I point you to Shadow the Hedgehog. The oh, video yeah, you had game. a shooter game. Well, that was weird. Yeah, because the Sonic games, they were like adventure at the time of the Dreamcast and stuff. And it was like platformer and heroes were like group. Sonic's always been platformer, family-friendly. Then they were like, wait, there's a shooter stuff here. We need to take advantage of this. And they released Shadow the Hedgehog, and they gave the black guy guns. Do not agree with that, just because he was the black hedgehog does not mean he needs guns, as some people have said. And also, the game itself was poorly designed. And it was like, what the hell? And they turned, tried to make a Sonic game, but it was basically fucking a third-person shooter. And it's like, that doesn't work. 
And they were, they were, they, and a lot, of, a lot of people seem to buy that game just because it was like, yeah, they're going towards what we like now. Cool. And I'm like, no, they shouldn't. It's like there's huge story-driven games, like I mentioned right now, are becoming the norm. I don't want to buy a Mario game which looks like the new Tomb Raider, where like Princess Peach is like this really damsel in distress that's been traumatized by the big realistic king dinosaur while now Mario has to go through and as he's going through the game he's learning these power-ups are actually representation of his inner id if you will if you want to be psyche like his 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 like raccoon tail is basically his dream that he's had as a kid to fly and that's how it manifests itself or fire flowers because he wants to, to torture people so it's like his dark side coming out wanting to burn people and it's like realistic flame no i want to play a mario game where it's cartoony he jumps on a mushroom's head i'm sorry i do i don't i don't want to see games i was thinking of peach kind of as katniss so that's probably learns how to like you know use a bow and stuff and like wow yeah <laughs> and it, it, i don't want to see these types of games Zelda. <laughs> yeah i don't want to see types of games like that it's like <laughs> it's like do you remember the wrestling game last generation richter Mm-hmm. shooting games were norm and people didn't know which one was going to take off was it going to be the halos or was it going to be the twisted metal vigilant eights and car ones <laughs> so WWE took a risk and made crush hour where you played as wrestler Stacy mm-hmm. but you didn't get to wrestle no you drove cars and shot each other what? <laughs> and it was it was horrible it was so bad it sounds <laughs> hilariously bad yeah, I think that uh, one of the things you touched upon was going to be uh, one of my main points of that even though, especially like the the generation we're currently in, you know, it tries to pander the market to, you know, bro-centric and even to like casual stuff. I think that it's that those games have a place, but I don't want the industry to pander to those people. Like, I don't think they should try, like, try to market to them because that's more of a fickle audience. I think that Maybe it's just it's probably selfish, but I think that they should pander to, you know, the core people that have been playing for years, the people that have supported them, and then you could make the other side projects, you know, that that'll try to pull people in rather than trying to chase the 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 what they see as like, oh, this is the big thing right now. Instead of chasing that, I wish that they would just, you know, create games that either A they want to create or for the people that play those and then that the other people will filter in. So you, you know, mean like in game sense. dev when you get extra points for using the trend? Like you get extra points for keeping up with the trend that is right now? Like we can yeah. just try to rush out a game and because of the yeah, popular trend that. <laughs> that happens in yeah, game that's, dev? That's, don't I, do that. I, yeah, yeah don't, do that. don't get those bonus points. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it won't pan out. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. And that goes into not just this genre. That also goes into, like, movies do the same thing. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, this is a little offensive, and I, I realize this, and anyone that's offended by this, I don't mean it in a bad way. 9-11 happened. We all know this, obviously. <laughs> it's not like, oh, we're going to have a figure this conspiracy. 9-11 happened. But right after 9-11 happened, America had this big, we're going to be overly patriotic thing to it. And I understand it. It was the country rallying behind it, Yes. However, there was no need for stuff like every for like Spider Man to have the big shot that suddenly he's next to the American flag blowing behind him. And every film that came out then had these Oh, and I was it's like say, we don't need new cage movies yeah, like about it. No, but <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say and it's like it's like Ma- Michael Bay's Transformers became popular because it was overly actiony based on retro stuff and then we had battleships and we, we keep getting films like this it's like the mu- um, vampires twilight was successful so they tried to oversaturate yeah. the market with vampires and it's like it's like the same thing with video games where it's the independent stuff which sometimes is the best and will actually try harder to make a new trend and they will just jump on what's yeah. available. And sometimes you get stuff where people jump on the latest trend, and it's actually good. For example, yeah, yeah for example, the latest trend was uh, with, with, with movies of vampires and TV shows with vampires and stuff, and we've had the Vampire Diaries. I fucking love that show. I really do enjoy that. that means it, real, oh. <laughs> yeah, and it's real cool. quick. Oh, um, there you go. Uh, just since you meant you're going to move farther and farther from this point, I just wanted to ask you something really <laughs> random. Did um, well, no, uh, with that Spider-Man scene that you mentioned, do you know what that scene replaced? 
Yes, where he did the web shot in between the two towers yeah. and stuff. But I yeah. don't think I don't think that ca- replaced it as much as okay, it replaced it, but they also added yeah. it at the end of the yeah. film. Yeah, they did. I mean, they had to take out the other. I kind of wish that they had just left that scene in or something, but or like you know, like a pr- uh, like a bonus feature because I kind of wanted to see that scene, what it looked like. But oh, yeah. yeah, well, you know what? I'd like to see them. You know what? I would like to have seen them done. What? Used computer digitally. And just extended the buildings around it and just changed the Twin Tower buildings, just changed their shape and stuff yeah, slightly and make them like an Oscorp building and fucking like, the Star Oz- Towers next to each other. It would be <laughs> awesome. It would work. Yeah. Yeah, they could have left it instead. They could have just yeah, left, left, left it. Super They could have just left it and put a sign, Oscorp, room, right there. No one would even like think <laughs> twice about it. Uh, yeah, but you'd have to extend the buildings around it and change some of the structure a little bit, because otherwise people would be like, what's the Twin Towers? Just me painted that even more offensive. <laughs> now but, it's Oscorp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we have to get them. But, but, and, like I was saying, the trends, you can get good stuff out of it. Like, yes. the trend last generation was the casual market. And, yes, Nintendo, Cap- Nintendo Wii, a lot of the Nintendo-specific games were awesome. The Lego games were awesome, and you you got stuff like them which were just fun. And it's like the bro centric games now. You get some really good ones, and you get some really good story driven ones. But I agree with Richter's point of you shouldn't follow the trend. Make the games true to what they are. For example, I don't want to buy a Devil May Cry game in which he's Edward from Twilight. I was gonna say Justin Bieber. I'm about the new one. Okay. DMC, they made him Edward from Twilight and tried to capitalize on the big emo market that was going around. Yeah, they the should not have changed his look, but the game still plays fine. Well. I see. I don't like the gameplay either. <laughs> it plays really well, though. <laughs> it plays like a Devil May Cry, though, at least. It plays a, like a Devil May Cry kart racer or, like, SimCity clone would be just t- terrible. It, <laughs> at it least plays, it's still a hack and slash. It <laughs> plays like a Devil May Cry game made easier, so it's ca- to capitalize on the emo casual stuff at the same time. And I'm like, eh. It's like, it's like Marvel v. Street Fighter 3. The first, like, Marvel v. Capcom 3, I should say. But cause there was other people in there. Never played with any of the other Capcom people. But, yeah, there was the other... Made- want to, like, wrap it up. <laughs> I, know. I, know, I was, just saying, oh, I was just saying, with the casual market, the way it was, they added the super easy mode, which made it so you could press one button and you could do all the moves, but... I'll, well, uh, the GameCube one of uh, Capcom versus SNK had that first, just... I'll say that, that's my final piece. <laughs> yeah, it did, but let's face it, adding it to this you know. one was clearly to kick out the casual stuff in there, like the online yeah. passes was a fan of it. Yeah, let's let's wrap it up, Stacey. Give All right, us your final final thoughts. Thoughts. Give us your, Yeah, final thoughts. Final thoughts. I think bro games are fine. Obviously, there's going to be, like, those college people and stuff. It's all good. It just, like, if they put, like, girls in it, try not to make girls into bros because then you get, like, weird. Because <laughs> sometimes it's in other games, like you said, like the, uh, the, what is it, crack. Fighting games where they pretty much are like <laughs> men with breasts, fight. like <laughs> so. Yeah, it, I understand it, and some of them I like, and just leave the women alone. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with that. <laughs> Don't turn Although, them into bros. <laughs> I mean, you can turn some women into bros. Like I mentioned, Mortal Kombat. It kind of does work for Sonya because she's an army chick and stuff, so it kind of works for the character, because in real life you do see some army chicks which are overly muscular and stuff, because they want to be treated as equals with the bros and stuff, so you could argue it makes sense if it's for the character, because it sounds really sexist to say, I don't want to see your overly manly woman, please make her eye candy. <laughs> oh, I don't want to see, that's true, I don't want to see that. You know what? Just make no one Diesel ever. That's my opinion. No one should be a Diesel ever. <laughs> In fact, all bro games should die now. I just completely change it because I they're visually displeasing both male and female. There yeah, you go. They're visually pleasing for some people. I said, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> those people. Are, are you one of those people? People? No. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm one of the people that find some of them appealing. <laughs> like. You could saw when I do the thing when I, on my channel when it goes like, oh, what the hell is it? Like, I think it's maybe presentation or maybe extras or gameplay, one of them, or final verdict. One of, one of my categories is WWE All-Stars, in which they're extremely fucking muscly and cartoony <laughs> over the top. It works for some games. Yeah. All right. 
Victor? That was your, uh, oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I will, um, hmm. <laughs> I'll agree with part, you know, some of that. I don't know if they should, you know, try to make them dudes. I, I definitely, I can, I can understand realistic, but yeah, don't. You should throw it out. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Dude. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for, for just bro games in general, I think that, uh, they do have a place, and I actually have played some. Like, I frequently, well, like, I've started playing uh, Gears of War 3 with some of my friends, and it's tons of fun. Uh, I don't really play the Call of Duty. I'm not a big, like, versus multiplayer person at all, so I don't. I stay away from those modes, and I know that that's one of the main lures of those types of games, so that's probably why I don't play very many of them, because that's what I feel like they center them on. But uh, overly muscled people, those are okay in some games. Like, I don't necessarily want Pac-Man to, you know, get a powered up mode where he goes all Super Saiyan, but yeah, in the <laughs> WWE All-Stars game, like, it, no, it worked because it was you, all cartoony. You want to see Pac-Man in space with, like, generic-looking P characters. <laughs> yeah, and he, it's a third-person shooter, and he oh, plays, you know, and, I was referencing the new Pac-Man game that's coming out I know, on next year. I know, and I'm just trying to make it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ka- it, it, No, it's not Capcom. It's Namco Bandai. Yeah, it's Bamco. <laughs> they may find a way to make it work. Maybe. Uh, so <laughs> They'll just throw in Tails characters. Out. Go for it. Who, me? Yeah. Like, okay, my final thoughts were basically bro-centric games. There is a market there, and I understand it. I'm glad the industry's realizing there's all the stuff there and is moving away from it. Overly muscular characters, like making women guys, I understand it for some stuff, because I'm sorry, there is a lot of women out there in the world that do look like men, and... China. Yeah, China. <laughs> uh, so mean. No, he's not on about in China. You know, about there's a no, female... No, there's where, a wrestler. Yeah, there's a wrestler called China that looked like a man. Oh, it sounded like you were but, making fun of Chinese women that they look like men. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Chinese women look like Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> that one made a bit of sense. Okay. But yeah, I was going to say, there is, I, I can understand it, and I'm sorry, I do enjoy seeing some of them in some games. Like, I enjoy seeing fat people in some games, and people of different shape, shapes and stuff like that, so everyone's equal, different races and stuff. But don't do it just because you're, you're trying to capitalize on the trend. Do it because it's true to the character, or it's true to the, the game you're trying to make. And nine times out of ten, if you do that, you'll make a good game. That was my final thought. Okay. And unlike Rick, that I will say I do play Call of Duty for multiplayer because I play like the co-op and stuff where I'm teaming with some of my friends and shit like that, and then we'll be against the other, okay human people, but it's still fun to team with them and speak to them while we're shooting these other. It's, it's fun. Um, one of my favorite games of all time is the Star Wars Battlefront series, which is basically a third-person Call of Duty Star Wars style. Okay. Yeah. It's been another episode of XGR. There's one thing you've got to mention. What's that? There will be no XGR on next week during our regular scheduled programming. Because instead, of, instead, of, instead <laughs> next week, we're going to be releasing at least three, possibly four, uh, at least three, four different videos the week afterwards. Because we're going to be looking at E3, well, starting at that, that weekend, looking at E3 and all the games that get released there. So there's going to be no news, no catch-up. It's all going to be basically E3. Yeah, so you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> See you then. <laughs> In the morning. <laughs>